the fourth race of episode 89 is away from Spa for the 750 class. This time we don't have five new people, we only have two. Uh, <clears throat> as everybody chaotically files through turn one, I see, oh, Veronica has spun it. Oh boy. Oh, that's a lot of damage to that thing. She got smacked with What the hell happened to you? She was starting fourth and she had outbroken two people in turn one. But then just got on those curves and nobody has any time to react. Try to do a little too much, I would say. Uh, our two new vehicles, one of which already has damage. <clears throat> no, no drivers, just two vehicles. As another part of that factory support, John Casillas has a brand new selection of new vehicles. We saw the Firebird at Laguna Seca. And now we're seeing a... Really, really, I feel a... What? Sore loser? Uh, a... Well, basically a C6 race car. A bit of a Grand Turismo 5 reference, I believe. Since that was the Grand Turismo game that Sean played when he was younger. Uh, that is his new 750 class car. Yeah, I remember seeing that. I remember hearing about that. Yeah, uh... <laughs> AJ continues to drive like a menace. Funny, because the person that originally called him out on their shit is also in the race. He's also the POV car. Good old Motoya Iwasaki is looking to pass one of the two new cars for fourth place. See, it's a little defensive through the S's, just kind of in general. Eventually, the Skyline will sneak his way through with superior power application on the corner exit there. But he gets crossed over through the second Stablo. Not that it matters. Here comes June Summers as well, just capitalize on the moment, but I don't think she will be able to. And then the other one, which I think I went straight past, I sure did, uh, Reiko Mishima. I don't really know where she came upon this car, but she has an F40. Uh, this is a car you just find. Uh, so all of the top four had to pitch us there which gives Iwasaki an easy access to the race loop. How many cars did you get there from that first lap? A grand total of nine. All right. Oh, no, 10. Okay, okay, never mind. That wasn't the only grand total. Only nine cars for damage. My god, the turbo wag on me for this car. I just, I will never get over that. I don't know if there's even, if he, if he thinks that there's even like a fix for that. It didn't really seem like he thought there was. And I kind of figure if there was one, she would know about it. Oh my god, Schwartz is really conservative on the brakes there. A regular sneaky driving. Kind of turns in on Blackpool and sort of nullifies all of that. Now here comes uh, Tater Chip, or Milo. Uh, full disclosure, I basically only use... I use a, a plain reference to using in my PlayStation. What the fuck is Black Fool? Like Black Fool. Because uh, I don't really know what to put as a Black Milo, yes, but I... As for last name, I'm not really sure what... And I don't really talk to them as much like a thrasher. I know it's like all, all, all those people are playing with, but you don't really ask. Uh, I would say I would say Iwasaki's got a pretty comfortable lead at the moment. He took a really good launch out of turn into turn one, courtesy of being four wheel drive. A bit of luck as all of the cars that were ahead of him at the end of the first lap all got damaged and had to fix it. 
and uh, his closest rival is one of the weaker vehicles in the category, especially in terms of straight line speed. Something that is very important to have at Spa. In fact, I understand that Barbara continued to attempt to establish Nitro Knights, as if it really has to be established much more. We already, we've already perceived it as probably about to be an absolute weapon. I mean, it's got GM factory support. I don't really think... Jesus. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, what is this gap? It is about four seconds. After two laps. So maybe it's not quite as much of a lead as I admitted out to be, but it is still quite a lead. And you are seeing just the difference between these two in a straight line. As here comes Tomas Kajer. Basically, like a nitrous boost difference there. Ishim and Blackpool continue to vie for sixth place. I think Blackpool again outdragged the F40, but she was able to break away later, having a much lighter car. Barbara is holding off Tate. I still believe that's how that's pronounced, because I don't want to pronounce it as T. Also, because I've seen it definitely. Or like Kayate. Uh, the RX-7 down the inside of the Corvette. Uh, there's just about space being left between the two. Literally just pretty much door to door through all of Fuhan. That's not something you see very often. These two are racecraft masters at the moment. Oh, uh, there's some contact. Bit of understeer from from the RX-7, but that's how he eventually makes the pass, but uh, Barber's still very much there. He's not out of the woods yet. He does have the superior power figure by far, but that Corvette has so much more cornering grip and braking efficiency that it just Insanity. We're gonna see that probably come into play right here. Down the inside, and practically effortless. But stuck on the outside now is not gonna help her any. A lot of curbs used, plus weaker acceleration from the Corvette due to having about 100 and something less horsepower. It is now Branch that is running last of the undamaged cars. And well, you know, once we got through the first lap, it's been relatively clean. Now let's back down. Um... It is still about four, four and a half seconds. But it's not shrinking though. Which basically means that, for all intents and purposes, Iwasaki is... It's his race to lose. I think... I think White Crazy has finally escaped that Corvette. Never mind. Right there. And now it's Reiko versus uh, Milo for 6th place. This position of Mishima has just been under constant attack. I guess she's able to put the new F40 through her paces. She's just having to race so... Uh, so aggressive... not aggressively, but she's really having to push the car to its limits. And beyond. To try and hang on to the position that she has. Not quite worse. Milo will get into sixth place. Not only has is Brant last of the damaged cars, the un the uh, no, yeah. excuse me. He's last of the undamaged cars, and he's actually under threat from be for being passed by the damaged. They've managed to make up the time they lost from pitting, and they're actually getting up to the group of cars that have not taken damage during this race. AJ might get into the top 10 despite, you know, basically sending Thrasher to the junk run. Uh, but in the victory realm, Iwasaki is going to take a, 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 a race win here for Spa that honestly never even looked in doubt. About a six second margin of victory over Dedrick Schwartz. Tomas Pager manages third, and uh, 
Mishima 7th, not an amazing debut, but I think she started 8th. It's hard to really gauge with that one, though, because, like, half of the field had to pit for damage on the first lap. So it's really hard to gauge how good that car is and how good her drive was during the race when half of her competition got wiped off the face of the planet before we got through uh, Sector 2. Uh, time constraints are looking ugly, and I still have a bunch of talking to do going into the final round, so let's go to the final round. So here is <clears throat> the starting grid for the roulette race here, but it's not really randomized. In fact, this is this is basically a custom tailor-made grid. Why? Um, well, I mean, it's a random starting grid, but the people on the grid were not randomized. Uh, this starting grid is composed entirely of cars and drivers that debuted this week. Every single car on the starting grid is new to epi for episode 89. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Now you see what I mean when I said this sound that this felt like a season opener? This is 20 brand new vehicles to the Challenge Series. And this isn't actually all of them, but <clears throat> John can only drive one car at once. Um, yeah, he has his C2 Corvette race car here that is in the 640 class. Um, not really too imaginative on the livery, but I think it's based off the old Edelbrock Corvette race car that was in Gran Turismo 4, to my knowledge. Uh, let's see. Uh... Bobby Marshall in an Alpine A110. Uh, Jeremy Shu <clears throat> driving a uh, Dodge Viper GTS. Nolo and Torque, who we saw in round one of the episode. Uh, Benjamin Bayer and his friend John Large running kit cars of 70s IMSA or SCCA competitors. A Ferrari 365 and a Nissan 240Z. The aforementioned C2 Corvette race car. Logan Cool in his armored Camaro, which whose livery bears resemblance to the Evernham Dodge vehicles from the early 2000s. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Six drivers <clears throat> that came in from the Shutoko Expressway crew, basically. They're just people who run on that. Jinji Osumi in an Impreza. Kazuo Kasai in an FD RX-7, Reina Kawamoto in an FC RX-7, Toshinobu Kurosawa in an S-14, Kenji Akihara in a Mark III Supra, and Sota Ukai in an S-14, who we saw in the first race of the episode, like, Torkin Noah were in the second one, the idiot. Uh, Walter Copeland in a... Uh, BMW E46, referencing the VON livery uh, M3 GTRs. Riho Futaba in her FD. Brant in his basically revived S13. Donnie Anderson in his C4 Corvette. Taro in his Mustang Boss. And the POV car, Riko Mishima's crazy F40. With, you know... <clears throat> with a good old Ridge Racer livery, because, I mean, of course, she's the Namco nerd. Of course there's going to be Ridge Racer on it. Every single one of her cars has a Ridge Racer on it. Girl thinks this is big dog. Tokyo South is always very chaotic off the start. Uh, literal rush hour traffic a lot of times, but Reiko's got a little lucky. Everybody just kind of made a lane. All right, not there, but... I think Bobby Marshall just kind of lazily drifted between lanes there. I was like, can we get some engine audio here, game? There was hardly an F40's width there, but she just kind of said, screw it. There was a width there. And she was sort of caught off guard by Bobby sliding off of the racing line, because you'd think to go to the left there, or drift to the left there, to make this right handed. But that is not what Bobby Marshall did. Also, I should mention this is a. Uh, Marshall is a 640 class car. Bayer and Large have 640 class cars as well. Copeland is a 675. 
And literally every single, like, Shutoko Expressway driver, like Kasai here, his girlfriend Kawamoto, uh, they are all 675s. Jesus, what the hell is that? This F40 is taking the, the little backstretch pinks flat? I'm sorry. What the hell? <laughs> My brain is had to like stop and process that a car, a road going car could have that much. Hang on to it, jeez. Oh, you're doing that on purpose. Or are you fucking fancy? What do you think this is? You actually think this is road racing? You don't have to drift here. It's not faster. And now you're probably going to get overtaken by torque for that. Or not. Bro. You actually took that at a competitive... What the fuck? That's an actually competitive corner in speed for this turn. Hello? That was faster than Torch. I'm... Uh, uh. Excellence. I get... I, I don't even know anymore, man. <laughs> this F40 has defined the laws of physics. You could use the new prototype car for time travel. They aren't doing that in delivery every, literally every corner. I think Draco's just showing off. I mean, they get some fucking motor people in drift, but still. To do it in the middle of a race. I also like how because of the way this race is arranged, she literally has one opponent in her category, Jeremy Chu. Okay. Yep, that was just a slight lift. 175, and this one's not even a lift, I don't think. Okay, it is. 182 through there. Let's look at how much. She's about to overtake Jeremy from that. Like, what? This car is not real. I mean, it's not. This car doesn't make sense, I should say. She lets to maintain traction. And we'll gain a bit of time in doing so. See what happens when you drive like a normal person, Reiko? Jeremy has so much more top speed, though. Yeah? Really? You're gonna do that when he's right behind you. Are you, like, daft? Now you're gonna get overtaken because somebody decides they want to show off. I don't like defense. We have an actual battle here. I'm noticing she turns traction control on when she's not drifting. She like jerry rigged the jerry rigged the thing so that it like has like a completely different differential settings when she does that or what the hell? <laughs> Crossover attack. Wait, that's Capcom. We don't. Well, we have a cam a cam a, ah. You have a Capcom fan, but he's not nearly as outward about it as, um, as Reiko or Kazuma are. Oh, traction control block. Oh, 
don't like those tires from up front, so this makes it look more like ridge racing. Oh, there was tire smoke there, actually. And then Jimmy's just watching all this like, what the fuck? What is this idiot doing? <laughs> He's gonna pass her because, you know, she compromised her corner and to do that. She had to back out of that because she had more momentum going in than Jeremy. What? This race just feels like... Every Am I in Twilight Zone right now? more of that dumb cornering speed be put to use. Another crossover on the Viper, not quite clear, they're gonna go sh dead on too wide, he's gonna back out of that, he doesn't even bother trying to contest that F40 from here, he's seen what it does through these turns, and he just can't be asked. Honestly, probably not a bad idea, because you'll just get ahead of her on the front stretch anyway when she inevitably decides to and drift out her way through the little the little Honda essence. I think of her from a little Honda station here. It's not like you can see over the walls, but... Oh, she's not drifting this time. She's just kind of going back and forth. Sometimes she feels like drifting, sometimes she doesn't. Sometimes you feel like you're not... Sometimes you don't. This is gonna bring us to two laps to go, despite that race, despite that run to the line camera angle we just saw. Oh, she's gonna take turn one like a normal person, and actually take it slower than if she were tricked. <laughs> uh, her apex speed was 97 there, it was 101 on the second lap. You can't make this shit up, this thing is actually a drift race car. I'm so dumb. Oh, that's a wall. No damage for her though, so I guess she's fine. Now we'll see just how much of a lead she can produce when she takes these pinks flat. What does it look like for her and go on board for these high speed pinks? Oh, she was. She barely even let off there. She had room on the exit. 100 and. Uh, uh, 187 through there. 187. As we quickly check in on the other categories, Noah was under threat from Logan, for some ways up ahead. Uh, Anderson has just, I believe, just taken the lead of 675 class over Walter Copeland. Um, assuming leading the, uh, the TXR crew, basically. John Large leads the uh, 640 class. Taro is in the back. And Brent is winning the two car race, the two Sylvia race in the 600 class. Just out of curiosity, did she drift again? No, she took a moment. This is straight up weird racing. If I had like if I had the chase camera set to where it didn't lock behind the car so much, that would literally just look like weird racing stuff. And Jeremy's having none of it. I mean he just watched that and he's like, yeah, no. Uh, Reiko's gonna get a nose in there. 
Jimmy will just about respond. The race is over for literally everybody except for these two based on the countdown time. Oh. Yep, Jeremy has just pushed his way ahead. He's tired of watching these fucking sideshows. I don't know if I can blame him, all things considered. I mean, compelling argument, Jeremy. Uh, unfortunately, a high speed takes. Carry this. Like, what is this, this car? Is just an anomaly. It's a drift-based race car. Dynamic handling much. It's a drift-based race car that actually takes higher cornering speeds while sideways. But even while with perfect traction, which it can maintain if she wants to, with seemingly no issues, she's able to take that kink which is barely even running off. And that lap car just oof. Hear me chew. The TXR Alliance didn't get him anywhere. I also just totally forgot this guy is definitely an express lane racer. So it's not just Ukai, it's the only one deck there that's not in 75, but uh, Jeremy Chuba is not a race winner, as... EXCELLENT! That, that, that's all I can say. Uh, Cork wins this category, Anderson wins 675. Uh, Benjamin Bayer stole the victory in 640 class from his buddy John. Uh, on the final lap or so, and then Brandt won the two-car race in the bottom class. Uh, yeah, I know, uh, kind of nobody really getting an individual chance here to shine, because, like, this entire grid is full of new cars, and out of them, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven did not appear at any earlier point in the episode. But, um, yeah, so over half the grid, and then, like I said, the whole grid was exclusively comprised of vehicles that debuted in episode 89. And the other ones that weren't in this race were just John's other two cars. His, um, C6 and his, his, um, his Firebird, that's the name of the car. That'll do it for episode 89. Hopefully I kept it under an hour. I don't think I did. To be honest, but uh, outro short 